merchants and the bankers too Who must get up and learn those rules River man and crazy chief One says sun and one says sleep Now the AM, the FM, the PM too Churning out that boogaloo It gets you up and it gets you out But how long can you keep it up? I said give me Honda, give me Sony It's so cheap and it's so phony Hong Kong dollar, Indian cents English pounds and the Benjamins I said New York Don't stop and give it all you got. Say New York, come on and get up. Don't stop and give it all you got. Say New York, come on and get up. Don't stop and give it all you got. Say New York, get up. You just don't stop and give it all you got. Rise to better my station. Take my baby to sophistication. See the ads, well isn't it nice? Better work hard 'cause I know the price. Now never mind that, it's time for the bus. And you'll get on 'cause you're one of us. The clocks go slow in the place of work. The minutes drag. Live from the Dog the Cat Studios on the Lower East Side of Manhattan, it's On the Horn with Andrew Einhorn. <laughs> And it was supposed to be a one shot, but it's a two shot, even better. Wow, that was quite an introduction. Did you write Thanks. that song? Is that you singing um, that song? No, but that's actually a friend of mine, uh, Brian Repka of Booga Sugar. And that's covering a, a Clash tune, actually. Oh. I don't know if Do you familiar, sing? But... Are you a singer? You strike me well, as someone who... who doesn't makes... sing? <laughs> Bore Pari Hagafen, <laughs> Simon Tovin, Mazel Tov, Mazel Tov, and Simon Tov. <laughs> I only know those those Jewish songs phonetically. I don't actually know the words because I learned them like at summer camp, just pretending to know them when everybody else is singing them. So I don't actually, if I had to sing them by myself, I'd be in big trouble, but I could sing along. You know, if you had like a kid's... And cinnamon toast and muzzle. I was just going to say the same thing. If you had like a kid's band, you could make up lyrics. I get the feeling you're good at making up lyrics <laughs> that would be good for children's songs, huh. am I right? I think that you could be onto something there, yes. Yes. You are so diverse. I've spent the last 24 and a half hours looking and studying. Actually, I've been editing most of the time, but still. Uh, it's very intimidating, you know? If you were Sarah Silverman, it wouldn't be as intimidating because she's funny, she's pretty, but she doesn't do 37 things. She's got a potty mouth, that one. Yeah. What do you, feel, how do you, what do you think about that, her potty mouth? You know, I I think she's very funny. I like her a lot. And I'm like one of those people who you got to get up really early in the morning to offend me. I'm not easily offended. But I did Good. tell somebody the other day, I don't curse in front of my parents. Do you curse in front of your parents? Never. I used to, they would wash out my mouth with soap. And my, par and my, and my parents don't curse in front of me, even though like they're, they were not in any way strict. Somehow right. it's some unwritten rule that we don't curse. Doggone it is about as bad as it got when I was a kid. Doggone <laughs> it! God! And God damn it. And I picked that up from my dad, so I find myself running around my apartment. God damn it! But then sometimes I spin that for something good, so if I have like an amazing corned beef sandwich, I'll go, God damn it, that's a good sandwich. Delicious. Bit a, yeah, bit of a flip. So just to let my people know out there, I actually have seven. First of all, I was supposed to have a co-host. And an hour ago, she's like, oh, something came up. Mm -hmm. Which well, is okay. It's more time for you and me, you know. Sure. But it's a shame because it was like a, a young, when I say young, like 30-year-old actor, actress who does voiceovers, who mm. I thought might be, I couldn't tell if she was Jewish or not, Shalon, and then she is. So there would have been a lot of things in common. But you know what? I don't need anybody stealing focus, Andrew. I don't want anyone stealing my spotlight. So it's for the best. Yeah. And let me say, because she was going to do in chat that if people have questions, because you're obviously, you got a lot of stuff going on. So sure. I thought maybe your various companies, your voiceover work, your family, uh, your ex-husband, whatever it is, you know. <laughs> He's not going to like that. He doesn't want to be on a, on a vlog. Is this a, is this a vodcast? What do you call this when it's live and there's video? I call it middle-aged sexy. That's what I call it. <laughs> I think a webcast is technically the webcast. term, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I said vodcast, web... and I was like, I definitely, that's not the term. Sure. I'm surprised you don't have your own television show. My own, you're surprised I don't have my own vodcast? I'm thinking yeah. about it. All of a sudden, now that I know the word, I'm thinking about it. 
No, I'm All not right, reliable before, enough to, to do something like that. I would do it twice and then I'd lose interest or forget that I was doing they, it. I don't believe that. Based on all the things I read about your acumen, your perseverance, your... Okay. Well, before I go into the 16 adjectives that describe you that I think would sum you up nicely, I'm just going to go right because I know I, I want to keep my things going. So this Sunday, I went to Washington Square Park. I'm not saying I took a hit of pot before I went, but I fucking rocked it in this audience. And I tried to ask questions related to you, but also uh, to the Chinese New Year and Valentine's Day. Which is still related to me because I am the year of the ox. I am an ox. I didn't know that. That's so good. That's even, that's wonderful. Okay. All right. All right, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. On the horn in the park, Washington Square Park. It's Valentine's Day. My guest this week is Ashley Albert. She owns a shuffleboard club and a matzo company. So my question is going to revolve around that. But also, it's a Chinese New Year, the Year of the Ox. So I'm going to ask about that. Shout outs for Valentine's Day, snacks. I got so many good things and the crowd is so nice. I'm very happy on the horn in the park. Valentine's Day. <laughs> Your first question is, do you know what year this is in the Chinese New Year? The ox. The ox. The ox, the ox I think. Uh, do you know what year this is in the Chinese New Year? No, I don't. Not a clue. Uh, nope. <laughs> I'm super ignorant. I'm sorry about that. And my roommate is Chinese and celebrates, so that's a little bit bad. This year the rat? Last year, right? The snake. Correct. Really? No, not really. <laughs> it's the year of the ox. That is correct. Any thoughts on like what that means if you're born in the year of the ox? It's probably going to be a good year for you. <laughs> <laughs> I wish you all the best. Do you know what year this is in Chinese New Year? The year of the ox, isn't it? It is. Uh, it's the year of the ox, I believe. Okay, yeah, this is year of the ox, right? You did know. Oh, yeah. Do you know what year this is in Chinese New Year? Yeah, year of the ox. Come That's on, right. bro. I celebrated team. Chinese New Year. Do you know what the ox actually means or does? Like, if someone was born in that year, could you describe any qualities? I actually looked that up a little bit. Keep going. I feel like 1997 was an ox year. Well, Dots, the year of the ox. Strong, fortitude, trustworthy, handsome, yeah, sexy. Yeah. Not my year. I'm the year of the dragon, but I could be an ox. It's your year. It's my year. I'm an ox. Sexy, handsome, strong. <laughs> what were the adjectives you used for that? All of those. I'm all of those. You know what? I actually have, I do a lot okay. of, let's see. Let, let me just check it again and see if it's actually accurate. What kind of voice did you want? Walter Cronkite or, or um, 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 Tom Brokaw? Oh, I like Tom Brokaw. Let's go with Brokaw. People born in here, the ox, are typically reliable, strong, fair, patient, kind, methodical, calm, and trustworthy. This is Tom Brokaw, NBC Nightly News. No, I don't like this, this interpretation. I think we got to find an alternate <laughs> oxyscope. Oxyscope. Wow. Patient? No. Calm? No. Um, no. I mean, <laughs> no. We're going to have to find an alternative uh, definition. Are are you a horoscope type woman who believe in the signs or the I am Chinese? No, I am not. But, you know, no. I'm one of those people who like, I will wish on a star just in case. I definitely wish on 1111 right. every time. I, if I notice 1111, I always stop and wish on 1111. I take wishes okay. very seriously. Yeah. Ah, every once in a while, I'll read a horoscope if it comes my way. Every once in a while. Sure. I loved what you just did. It was very SNL character on the news. <laughs> but, uh, I don't know if it ever came into your vo voiceover work. So I'm going to describe just so people get to know you because uh, there's a lot of stuff and I don't have to tell you because you live it. But I'm going to throw out these words because when I was talking to you before, polymath, which I never heard before, mm -hmm. kindy, I think you said rock front woman. Mm -hmm. International ranked shuffleboard player. By the way, it's F F L E. I think on your website it might have been F F E L. I'm just saying. Oh. Yeah. Mm, no. As that's the my family and me, the pen students who will grammatically correct me in spelling and pronunciation. I appreciate uh, it. Serial entrepreneur, 
10th mm -hmm. best shuffleboard female in the world. Mm -hmm. All right, it's going to you. Crazy dog. Shuffleboard. Both the crazy dog lady, lady and helicopter dog mom, mm -hmm. who took her dog to Japan for surgery, Matza Impresario, and Idea Man. Discuss, that's, that's, explain. That sums, that sums it up. You got it. Yeah. That's a lot of stuff. That's it great, though. Little, yeah. We didn't and was, even, and voiceovers. We didn't even talk about voiceovers. That didn't make yeah. it. No, but it's on the list. Oh. You know, I, there's so many things, it's hard to know where to go first and what to do because I have these videos to play. But I mean, the voiceover stuff, if we're staying on there, does interest me a lot because I dabbled in and I, I think we talked about it. I didn't have the smarts or fortitude to stick with it. But you obviously did pretty well for 25 American years. Yeah. Yeah. I moved 40. to New York when I was 19 to do it. And I just had like serendipitous good luck and i what we talked about before is that it really i don't have a particularly mellifluous voice i'm just a very good out loud reader i was definitely the kid in elementary school who once everybody took a paragraph and they went all the way around the room then like the teacher be like all right ashley bring it on home like i was yeah. the person to, like flipped it off so you know i come by it honestly did you say sir Superfluous? What was that word? Mellifluous? What? Oh, was mellifluous. A... Mellifluous. Jeez. Mellifluous. My family would like your vocabulary. What? What is the person that brings up the rear? Like in a four relay race, first, second, third, a, a fourth. Caboose. A caboose. Caboose. Well, that's sexual, but sure. Oh no, it's not. No, a I don't know. <laughs> it's a train. The caboose. Who brings up the the? You mean like in a in a in a baton in a relay race? Yeah, relay race. So like the like the of the stander or like at the, the closer. The finisher, the closer. Yep. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Wow. So how did kids feel when you're up there? Oh God, Ashley is pronunciating and giving the right spaces and mm. affectations. Ugh. I think, you know, I, I, I didn't, it wasn't like teacher's pet style. It was like, everybody was relieved. Cause you know, when you read out loud in <laughs> elementary school, first of all, yeah. that paragraph that you read is the only one that you don't pay attention to, right? Like you're so busy reading it that you yeah. don't comprehend. It's kind of a, you know, but I guess it keeps everybody engaged. And then they're just relieved that they're done mm -hmm. with their part and they're happy to just let me drone on for a little bit longer and zone out. So I don't think right. I, I never got any, I never elicited any ire from my, from my classmates for being the, the caboose. Good. The I'll ask them. What that because your voice is youthful, to say the least. Is that what did people say before you left? Oh, go to New York. You could probably be a kid's voiceover. You got a great voice. You could play anything from five to 18. Yeah, kind of. So the way that it happened was that my dad uh, has a like a recording studio in Miami, and I was briefly working there. And um, someone stopped and asked me for directions to a pizza place. And I told her and she said, I love your voice. Have you ever considered doing voiceovers? And she turned out to be the voiceover queen of Miami. I don't know if you've spent any time in Miami, but she did Burdines, which back in the 70s and 80s, Burdines was like the Miami department store. Anyway, yeah. she invited me to come to the meeting of the Miami voiceover elders. They got together like once a month to like read copy and talk shop and super goofy. But at the time it was really intimidating. And so I went in and I, they said, you know, let's just play around. Let's hear you read some copy. And I read the copy and they said, wow, you can really do this. You should go to New York. That's where the work is. We're here because we built a niche for ourselves here, but really you should go to New York. And I always wanted to go to New York. And so I was like young enough and dumb enough and I had never been here before I moved here. And I just came and, and uh, 30 years later, here I am. It's like a fairy tale or a Seinfeld <laughs> episode. It's uh, George's hands. George, you have such yeah. lovely hands, which they never really showed because they weren't that good. But wow, you got discovered like a Marilyn Monroe walking down the sidewalk on Fifth Avenue. Exactly like Marilyn Monroe. Oh. <laughs> I think it's very similar to her. Yeah. Lots of wow. You know what? I'm going to go right to number two. So I was on the ox. Uh, I got five other questions, but I, you know, I didn't know whether do I ask people what they think that represents, and I did. So after okay. that, we have matzo. We got shuffleboard. We have snacks. We have a hidden surprise. I'm not wow. going to say it has the word Lenny and Squiggy in it. And what? Valentine's Day. Okay. Yeah, I like this one. Everything is a surprise. Okay. Um, 
Hold on, it just takes me a second to share my screen. <laughs> Love these guys. Is there volume? Uh oh. Technical difficulties. Please hold. Okay. It's uh, who even needs it? I could tell you about the year of black. No, it's 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 very important. I sometimes I forget to click the share audio, which is so important. That is that's a key feature. And I keep telling the company, don't make us have to click the tiny, tiny, tiny share audio screen. And they, okay, let's see if this, uh, hopefully this will uh, give us audio. What can we do for you there, Mr. Uh, do you know what year this is? The Chinese New Year? It's the year of the ox. What adjectives would you use to describe people born in the year um, of the ox? Fortitude, strong. Uh huh. Resilience. Keep going. Patience, endurance. Well, ox is like strong, resilient, powerful. Uh, strong uh -huh. and um, determined. Strength. Oh, I guess they would be strong like an ox. They're supposed to be like strong and like they can um they can pull a lot of weight. Hard work. Hard work. Yeah. Hard work. Strong. Reliability. They might work hard. They might be type A personalities. Uh, Steadfastness. Stability. Stability. Tough. Brave. I guess having a strong foundation whenever change is to come, I suppose. Definitely a year that we step forward, like aggressively, <laughs> like making a change, a big impact. Because oxes, like when I think about it, I think like two of them, like crushing heads together almost, you know what I mean? True. Uh, it doesn't mean anything to me. I don't celebrate the Lunar New Year, um, <laughs> but I have a couple friends who do. Good people all around. Uh -huh. I'm the rooster. I don't even know if we even mesh, but this one's a rooster also. No, he's, 50, he's 53, I'm 69. <laughs> I only I, know know I love those by the way these these videos are so cool but I only know that I'm the ox because back in the day when you would go to a Chinese restaurant they'd have the Chinese um lunar animals on the menu on the paper menu on the tables I don't think mm -hmm. they have those anymore maybe hmm. they do I would like I those know. those are great but so that's how I know that I'm the ox yeah those guys were so good the variety in Washington Square Park, it never gets old. It was such a perfect day because it wasn't icy enough. I go around on rollerblades, if you couldn't tell by that first shot, and then I just bop from person to person. And I have to say, as a 93% straight male, whenever I see older gay men, they're the best. They are like so engaging and they're always receptive and they're smart and they have good references. And I don't know, we just have this thing. Maybe I'm going to become an old gay man. You never know. Not a bad way to go. I know. I could become so, an old man. A lot of the things you obviously have, there's street for those of our fans out there. I, I mean, I just summarizing, I don't want to over summarize you, but the Royal Palm Shuffleboard, the Matza Project, and then Jimmy's, the band, seem like your three major things among others. Yes. And I think now, I want to just. Oh, um, sorry. Now that I don't do voiceovers anymore, I would say that yes, those are my, those are my three. But you're still dabbling in the voiceovers, right? You said if something good comes along. Every once in a while, yes. But very, very rarely. I don't want to stay on voiceovers, but I am curious because I love voice. And I just at the last minute I wrote down, um, no, let me see. Nah, right. Voice, love, announcers, idols, actors, musicians. So it's like, were you, t as a kid, I was so turned on by certain comedians and even, and sports announcers. I imitate all of them. Jack Buck and Hank Stram and the Flyers announcers and the, the cadence and the excitement and the words they used. I mean, it's an art form. So were you excited by that kind of thing? Um, no, you know, it's one of those things where like I can do a lot of accents. I can do a lot of different voices, but it's not anything that I studied. Um, and it's not like, you know, I think there are people out there who are super meticulous and they look at an accent and they say, okay, so you flatten your A and then you round a D and you do all these things. And that's how you, you know, elicit the accent. And that's yeah. not how I do it. I just, I don't know what's going to come out until I go to read the copy and, and, uh, it just very naturally comes out. But I was thinking more about you're sitting back on a Saturday night drinking your red wine and something comes on and you went, oh my God. Or how about an old Hollywood? I mean, you know, I watch a lot of old movies on TBS and I guess this is just diverting, but they had that 
Spinglish. There's a word for it where England, 1940s, everybody kind of talked like this. The Philadelphia story was just on. And it, the continental accent. Continental. Are, where, are there actresses, not, not things that would influence in you, no? Just like, oh, oh my God, I love Marlena Dietrich's voice or Carrie Grant or anything like that? No, no. Not, I mean, okay. I, definitely not, not how I came to voiceovers was not that way. I mean, I love movies and television and pop culture, but I'm, I was never a real big celebrity yeah. person. And, and, and it just really is something that's uh, like very intuitive for me wow. more than okay. it is like, uh, something I'm working from imitations or anything. Je comprends. Yeah. Uh, you said accents. Is this French, Dutch, Israeli? Um... All sorts of stuff. I mean, again, it's not something like I'm not going to do them for you now. But Damn like, it. You no, know, I see, I see where this is going, and I am not going there. But I, <laughs> I, you know, when you go in to do a, a voiceover job, you get into the booth, and you don't know, you know, you get the copy when you're in the waiting room, so you, right. you don't have a chance to say anything out loud until the moment comes that you get in front of the microphone, and then you just sure. go for it, and you just don't even know what that voice is going to be until it's the very moment where you have to be accountable for doing that voice. And so I think that's wow. probably the thing that I'm best at. Okay. Yeah. Actually, the thing that I'm best at is uh, the button. I always put a button at the end of my takes and I feel like that's really was the secret to my success in my what day. What does that mean? What's the button? So if it's like a McDonald's commercial and you're like, huh, yeah, McDonald's, I love it. You know, like just a little, like as the conversation's over, something that's not in the script, where you're yeah. like, well, I guess that's the end of that, huh? Like just that, huh? At the end wow. is like a button that that is three, actually, yeah. Three people in suits behind the glass. Did you hear that? Was that in the script? I love that. Did she do I that? Love yeah, that. Was. What do you think about that? Could you keep that button? You do it again with the huh, a little bit more demure, but we like that. Give us three versions of that. Exactly. God, I'm sort of jealous. I did a lot of voiceovers of my own for a TV show that I did, and it was a little dorky, but you know, and it was just work. It was like, you got 27 and a half set. I don't have to tell you, but it was very, I have to, don't try not to speak so quickly, but kind of do it with inflections. And I'm always curious, why would a ballerina make less than an exotic dancer? <laughs> I had to go to Midtown to find out. Lo and behold, Jessica appeared right at the right moment. Oh, you're half a second too fast, little man. All right. Oh, you mm -hmm. took your glasses off. My God, you're beautiful, Mrs. Johnson. Oh, thank you. I'm just cleaning them. I started wearing them during the pandemic, and now I have to keep wearing them because I don't remember where I put my contact case in July when I stopped wearing my glasses. I don't know where the contact case is, so I have to keep okay. wearing my glasses until I find it. Fucking COVID. Oh, anyway. Okay, let's so the among your many projects, let's go to the matzo one because that's my third. So the matzo project. Yes. And I should you talk about it and I'm gonna pull up because um I like the description. You were talking about uh how it started, your friend. Yeah, well I'll I let you talk with. about it. And your but your grandma and the logo, which was so important. So talk well, about yeah, it. And I'm gonna I probably have one somewhere around here I can I can run and grab. But so yeah, I have a an artisanal matzo company that I started about three and a half years ago with one of my summer camp friends from Camp Blue Star, Kevin Rodriguez. And um, it's like, in the end, like, it's just like a good, snappy, neutral cracker. And now we're trying to take on the pita chip and the saltine. And we're actually gonna be in um, on JetBlue starting in March. That's oh. not the thing I wanted to bring up. That's 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 wonderful. And I apologize because before I didn't read enough. Uh, let me get rid of this for a minute. Oh, yeah, yeah. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. I'm going to go to you solo shot. Wow. It says that these are our Harissa chips. And it says, a little spicy for me, but my Joshy loves them. Great. We have matzo crumbs, matzo ball soup kit, matzo ball mix, all kinds of stuff. Oh, keep going. I love that. I love to see that. And first of all, I should tell people, because what I, when I first met you, your website is just beautiful. Anybody out there on TV, then go look at um, ashleyalbert.com. Oh, thanks. I mean, oh, yeah. it goes without saying. It just, yeah. Call your mother. It says call your mother. 
Would you ever get to the point where there's a national campaign and you can do the voice for the for the matzah? I we talked about doing like a dialogramma, like a matzah project dialogramma line where you get you call and I talk to the people, but like some sort of like a you know some sort of like several different kinds of grandmas you could be like to hear what you should do about your on your next date to decide whether you should go to law school press two you know i love it keep going i just want to hear all about this yeah yeah so no I, we didn't do it but we might we might at some point we're also talking about doing grandma lots of project fortune cookies uh -huh. so be really good yeah ashley you're such an idea man <laughs> And for the first time, this young child's voice suddenly went older. That was the first time you went over 60 or 70, maybe. <laughs> okay. Well, beautiful packaging. So as I was saying before, um, I didn't read enough quickly. And I thought, well, matzah is kind of plain. Let me go out and ask people. First of all, do they know what matzah is? Because, sure. you know, I would say half the people that are not Jewish, even in New York, they might not know what it is. And then what could they do? Because you had mentioned JetBlue that you were trying to get it on planes. I thought, wow, what? You've already done it. All your things are, the word artisanal implies, tell me what that implies. I mean, I think, you know, artisanal is kind of an empty, empty word now. But I think the idea is that it's a carefully curated, thoughtfully made, beautifully packaged, small batch product that we bake ourselves. But also that um, it's got something different. I mean, you could take matzah and cut it into a small square and put it in a bag and put it on a plane, but that doesn't mean it's, I mean, you have more inventiveness, right? The flavors and the yeah, textures. The ones that are beyond JetBlue, are, they're called matzah bites and they're itty bitty um, and they're cinnamon sugar flavored. So they're gonna be in the snack boxes. So if you have like a snack box, you know, they have those ones that have beef jerky and cheese and stuff, it'll be in there. Wow, okay. Bison. Uh, here we go. So don't bother looking at this next video. <laughs> no, oh. but it was really, it's interesting because the word cinnamon does come up. And I, I, I was really impressed. People really put the, the noggin in to think of, of what one could do. Uh, well, I'll go to the videotape. That's true. Maybe I guess some good advice. Can you hear it? Nope. 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 Okay. Hold on. Going back. I keep forgetting to uh, check the thing. One guy, I don't want to spoil it, but one guy said, how about mixing in horseradish? And I was like, wow, right? I just thought that was a... Uh... That's a good one. Okay. Well, yeah, I mean, it keeps... Like horseradish and what, though? I feel like it needs, like, one more... What do you eat horseradish with besides... Like... Gefilte fish. Ooh, I don't think we want gefilte fish flavored matzah. That's not going to no. sell. That fish, those fish crackers will never sell. All right, hopefully we got one uh, let's see. see. Can you think of anything that would like go in matzo to make it a little more spicy or just interesting for the yes. common person? Uh, cayenne anchovy paste. That's Ooh. where it's at. Maybe some jalapeno pe peppers. Yeah. Hot sauce, some like red hot sauce. I mean, that always makes everything taste good. I would say lemon, lemon juice. Ooh. You see, I don't know what's, listen, I don't know what's, Brian, do I not know what's up or do I um, not know um, what's up? Oh, you could do horseradish flavor. You could embed the horseradish. <gasps> and you could have, choose between red and white because red is sweeter and the white is hotter. Horseradish is a good idea. Very, very on topic with the holiday. Once you give people choices, it'll you be like, you become very an, Jewish. then you can have a matzah store, just like an M&M store. You do anything to matzah. I mean, you put, you put chili pepper in it. I mean, I see that's smart. Salt and pepper. <laughs> <laughs> herbs, certain herbs yeah. in it. Tarragon. Lava cake. Uh -huh, you what put that lava is? cake on top of matzah. Yeah, I would love that. Or like if you put a scoop of ice cream and then put bacon on top of that ice cream. Did you hear what he said? And bacon. <gasps> matzah is stereotypically, historically a bland food. Isn't that its whole spiel? I think I feel like that's just what matzah is. You know, matzah is dull as shit, and I almost never eat it. But the suggestions I've gotten today are so good, from hot sauce to spices to um, horseradish. I thought that was an amazing answer. So I say yes to all of those. Yes, to all of those. Yeah, you're I already ahead of the curve. Sure, sure. Yeah, no, we don't mess around. We're we're uh, we're working on a zatar flavor. We're working on a ch cream cheese and chives flavor. Um, but I like horseradish. I have to think about. We were going to do a lemon rosemary flavor. Okay. Mm -hmm. Are you Salt getting any flack from the rabbi because the traditionally bland 
matzah is suddenly being spiced up. No, they love it. I mean, the yeah. OU, which is the Orthodox Union, that's the kosher certificate. It's the like the good one. They love yeah. us. Our rabbi there, Rabbi Jenkins, he invites us to dinner. He's like super into it. He loves the idea of like bringing it into the modern lexicon. Uh -huh. But it's not kosher for Passover. So it's really okay. for people who are gastronomic Jews more than, you know, <laughs> which I never, I mean, which one's secular or non-secular? Which one's the religious one? Uh, I guess non-secular because secular implies that you're not religious. So that it's so. the word gastronomic Jews versus secular, non-secular Jews. I'm going to do an impression of, of a rabbi that is not happy about it. You've added all this, the fancy spices, the, the kid to the children to our forefathers. We're racing from the Egyptians with no time to bake. Do you know what Mats is? They tried to bake back, no time. They get it, it's flat, it doesn't rise. You, what, they sit around, they've got things to do, they chit chat, they smoke their cigarettes and play backgammon. Now there is no time. Where did this spice come from? This is sacrilege. <laughs> Have you seen your grandfather yet? Go see your grandfather, okay. All right, just to <laughs> spice things up just, a bit. Just, that was very spicy. Besides, um, besides the airline, oh, I think some stores. Uh, I saw you oh, said a ton some of stores. Yeah, we're in about seven hundred stores around the country. So we're in Whole Foods. We're in Italy. We're in all sorts of like little fancy specialty stores. We're in Zay bars. We're in um, Fresh Market all over the country, and we're in South Korea. We have like a guy who just like brings it over to South Korea. We're in St. Bart's. We're in Tokyo. We're in the UK, Canada. We're taking now over. You, one would think with such a, a big project and a busy schedule, I think on your somewhere on your thing, I remember it said, oh yeah, but I'm not, I'm letting my partner do most of the work as far as that business. <laughs> yeah. And also, <laughs> as it says here at the bottom, it's too washed out. I said to you like just haphazardly, well, how are you spending most of your time? And you 30% volunteering at a Brooklyn Relief Kitchen. Well, right now there's not a, you know, the Shuffleboard Club is closed. So I spent a lot of time just sitting around eating. And then finally, I, I saw something on Instagram that people were doing working at this food pantry. And it turns out that it's just right around the bend. So I went and started volunteering there. And it's great. And it's also more exercise that I have gotten in just, you know, a whole full year, just, just lifting, you know, boxes of, of cans and things. It's great. That's wonderful. Yeah. Are you a bike rider? Anything that aerobic? No, that I, you know, I um, I only learned how to ride a bike. My Royal Palms business partner, Jonathan, taught me how to ride a bike just within the past 10 years. I didn't know how to ride a bike for that, but I still ride like I'm surviving. I do not ride a bike like Kermit and Piggy, just like, you know, gently going right. through the park. I'm like, <sighs> yeah, very stressed out. I have like, I announce when I'm going to stop. Okay. It's stopping! It's stopping! You know, I don't. So I'm not. guessing you're not skiing, rollerblading, surfing, <laughs> or sky. No. Okay. No, I'm an indoor. I am an indoor person. All right. You got to take care of your health. You got to keep well. Obviously, you're sure. moving. Jonathan Schnapp. 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 Jonathan Schnapp. Your business partner. Who yeah. you? I asked you. I was like, "Is that your husband, boyfriend?" And you said, "Well, he's." He's the Lenny to my squiggy. And I think you, <laughs> you just tossed that in there without thinking too much about it. But I was like busy taking notes. So, uh, you he, know what? We'll he, would say, he would introduce me as his worthy adversary. Okay. So. Maybe we'll do that. No, I don't know. Do we do Lenny squiggy or we do shuffleboard next? Which, which I'd one? I like this Lenny and squiggy for sure. They don't get okay. enough play, Lenny and squiggy. They don't. And at the end of this video, I actually, I, we might get sued. I, I'm just telling you ahead of time because I, I went on the web because, uh, to get a clip and I put it at the end. And I meant to put like an homage because I think two years ago, one of the guys died. So, mm -hmm. And the last clip I have is like them in heaven. And I was going to write like rip beloved and I ran out of time. Anyway, but it seemed <laughs> well, like a fit. Well, Lenny is Michael McKeon, who's went on to be a big star. Yes. Okay. Then it was Squiggy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Michael McKeon. Great. SNL. A lot of movies. All the Christopher Guest movies. I mean, he's done a ton of stuff. Uh, Spinal Tap. Yeah. 
Squiggy, not so much. Squiggy's the Andrew Ridgely of that group. That of, yeah. of that duo. He's the Garfunkel. Oh my. What was the one before that? Andy Andrew, Ridgely. Andrew Ridgely is the other guy from Wham. Oh, from Wham, which once in a Catskill Mountains, an Irish woman said to me, Hey, my favorite group is WUM. And I was like, What is WUM? Oh, don't you know WUM? Oh, Wham! Wham! Yeah, yeah. Handsome man, Andrew. Yeah, he was a handsome, not as handsome as George, sadly. All right, I already screwed up again. Uh oh. That's no, okay. I just have to sh share the audio. Are you having fun so far? Yeah, this is. I'm very impressed with these these videos. They're great. It's three hours of shooting and two days of editing. It looks <laughs> flawless. The audio is such an art form because I have two mics, one towards me, one towards them. Because behind masks and six feet away, yeah. and then later, if you looked at my scale, it's this thing that's up and down, just so it's not like too quiet or too. Loud. Anyway, I and feel like rolling blades the whole time. Yeah, that's the easy Very part. Awesome. Okay. Are you like a dance? Do you like dance rollerblade? Do you ever go to um, Lola's roller roller skating party? My friend Lola mm, Star has a roller skating party in um, Prospect Park. It's like themed music parties. You should go. I should go. Oh, I just forgot to do something. Hold on a second. Um, I should. That maybe isn't quite my style. I'm not one that would go to like, I know in Central Park, there's the disco roller circle. As a kid in middle school, we used to go to, or maybe even high school, we'd go to, this is way before your time, but uh, I mean, we're talking, it must be early 80s or something. That was the thing. We'd go ice skating and we'd go rollerblading. And I still can see, I got this image, the heavy skates, the thick board, lifting it up. And then like all these people hanging out in the middle, Jordash jeans, it might be. And what? long combs and pockets and the feathered back hair. And people would slap hands with people they didn't know as they went by. <laughs> a lot of specific makeup. Okay. Well, that those pictures I sent you of our mutual friend Astra, that was yeah. at her roller skating birthday party. It was, that was at a roller rink in the 80s. Ah, <laughs> I might get to that. Uh, let's see. I was hoping actually Astra would pop in, but. Um, do you know who Lenny and Squiggy are? Nope. Do you know who Lenny and Squiggy are? Do you know who Lenny and Squiggy are? No. Do you know who Lenny and Squiggy are? <laughs> no, I don't. Do you know who Lenny and Squiggy are? I don't. And I'm what? also not 31 at all. I'm way younger. Do you know who Lenny and Squiggy are? No. Do you know who Lenny and Squiggy are? Who are Lenny and Squiggy? These guys know. Of course. Oh, wait, wait, wait. The very Shirley. <laughs> Happy Days and uh, Shirley and what's his name? Uh, it's Laverne and Shirley. From Laverne and Shirley. Shirley. I do know Laverne and Shirley, but yeah, I, I can't say I know this. So you know Laverne and Shirley, but not Lenny and Squiggy. Do I, well, I know of the show because it came from Happy Days, but I, I don't know the characters. <laughs> Hello. That's what Squiggy used to say. No, wait, yeah. Lenny. Oh, it almost doesn't matter. Laverne and Shirley. Now, you, my guest, said he's my Lenny to your Squiggy, so I found that. That's why I did this question. What did they, what did they say when they walked into a room? Hey, I don't know what they said. No, oh, that's the Fonz. What did they say? <laughs> Hello. Hello. Okay. <laughs> you did get good. And there is no reason on earth why Prince Charming cannot walk through our front door. Hello. <laughs> Hello, girls. Hello. 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 <laughs> Wow, I gotta say, they really, they did the cr the Kramer walk-in. They were the original burst through the door neighbors. Long they before, were. I, wonder right. if, I wonder if Kramer would point to them as inspiration. The originator might have been Art Carney. You know, oh, Art Carney. Yeah. Yeah, from the Honeymooners? Yeah, this is going way back. I he's, don't know if he burst in, but there was a... Uh, it was certainly an entrance, right? His son Brian Carney is a voiceover guy. Did not know that. Mm -hmm. Wow. Can you do anything on the honeymooners, the wife, the I'm husband? Sure. This was before my time, I'm happy to say. There's not much <laughs> before my time, clearly, 
But the honey, I never saw the honeymooners or the odd. Is it the odd couple or the honeymooners that is? No, it's the you know, honeymooners. <laughs> well, yeah, that's the odd kind of, Hey, Rofi boy, Norton. And he was always groveling like this. One day, sweetie, pearl zoom. He was going to hit her to the moon. Yeah, that's <laughs> Evidently good. wouldn't. That's not good. <laughs> yeah. Norton. But he had that, boom, the door flung open and he came in with his 1940 cargo pants and a golf club and a brim tat and a happy expression. So he was the original wacky neighbor? I mean, who's to say what's original? That's pretty, that's pretty early TV. So he, I guess, would have yeah. been one of the early ones. Yeah. Wow. So that was, uh, I, I, you know, I did, I, I did all the kids first and then I went into the, uh, Boy, you really see that dividing line. It's like 40-ish and yeah. That is that was a depressing segment, Andrew. Thank you very much. I didn't do all the editing with those constant ones. There was, I looked online, like a squiggy saying hello. That was the first thing that came up. So actually yeah. I trimmed, I cut it down by a third, but uh, I don't know. It's really good. good. Thank you. Okay, so yeah, it's my pleasure. That was, you know, I'm here to entertain myself as well as you, so. So now let's talk about the Shuffleboard Club. What a unique, special thing, the Royal yeah. Palms. The Royal Palms. And I think I sent you that every Monday night we do this broadcast on YouTube, on the Royal Palms YouTube channel, which is Royal Palms Shuffleboard, I think. If you search mm -hmm. Royal Palms Shuffleboard, you'll see it. And it's called Shuffle Insanity, and it's our league teams doing a very, I think you looked at it, it's like a very professional broadcast. And my, you know, Jonathan Schnapp, my Lenny, he and I commentate. And I really feel like if you watch this, you will become a good shuffleboard player without ever setting foot on a court. So that by the time we open back up again, we're gonna have much better players than we left with in March. Is it fun to, I'm looking for my shuffleboard note because I had a lot of notes on the, uh, we have so many different things on the horn, voiceover, it's gotta be. Jonathan, Sh oh, here's the shuffleboard one. Because that's an interesting story too. Uh, it seemed to come out of nowhere. 2011, you're in Florida with your friend and you go, let's drive three hours to Tampa to play this thing. The St. Petersburg, we went, to, we went to the Mirror Lake Shuffleboard Club in St. Petersburg. And yeah. you know, it's funny, we went there and, and we met like this small group of people who would go to these municipal park courts and play and they shared their beer with us and they taught us how to play. And we came back up to New York and we said, oh, that would kill in New York. And we didn't really mean it. I was working full time doing voiceovers. Jonathan was a flash coder. He developed um, WebMD. That's his big coding flame. Wow. I know. It's a good one. Wow. Yeah. yeah. But we didn't really, we didn't need new jobs. But so on the weekends, just for fun, we would start, you know, looking at real estate. And we found this building and we were like, okay, if we're serious, we have to take this building. And if we don't take this building, then we're not serious. Because by the time, if we decide in three months, you know what, maybe we should start a shuffleboard club. This building, yeah. this price and this location isn't going to be here. So we didn't have any money raised or business plan or anything. We just plunked down our life savings on the deposit for the lease. And then we had to raise many millions of dollars. And we opened this 17,000 square foot vintage Florida themed shuffleboard club. And now we have two. And now we have one in Chicago, too. So now then there, are, you know, have to be, I think we figured out that there has to be hundreds of thousands of people who have played shuffleboard because of the Royal Palms. Wow. Cool. I didn't realize what a big endeavor. That is huge. That what a risk. I mean, you said like putting everything, selling everything, whatever, anything, putting all your money into this thing. I remember High Lie. Remember you grew up in Miami, oh, right? High Lie was a big thing way back when. And that didn't seem to last too long. Oh yeah, but this is this is not as dangerous. I think Kylie kind of people were dying because the balls were hitting them in the temple and killing oh, them. Not gotcha. deadly. Shuffleboard not as deadly. Just de deadly, but not as deadly as Highlight. How do you change people's attitudes? Because everybody's going to initially have the same thing. Isn't that old people in Miami, yada, yada, on cruise ships? But the thing is, it's actually a very compelling game. And I think that's the thing that's really been the secret to our success is that it's not ironic. When we first started, <laughs> impressed people were like, oh, another hipster, ironic co-op <laughs> thing, an old something. But the yeah. game itself is really compelling. It's 15% skill and 85% strategy. And it's very hard to be very good, but it's very hard to be very bad. So you get on a court, 
one of our staff members gives you a lesson. It's like a two minute lesson. You can be up and playing in two minutes. And what's so cool about it is that, you know, you'll never meet anybody who was an all state shuffleboard player. So it's a level playing field. When we have these corporate parties and people, you know, from the office come, it could be Janice from accounting that is like the real ringer in the group. It's a finesse yeah. game and it's a strategy game. So you just never know who's going to be good at it. And I think that unlike ping pong, right, or uh, bowling or pool, where you actually have to have some skill, I can't play any of those games. It would be no fun for me to participate with you if we went to play ping pong. I would just be all over the place. But shuffleboard, everybody can start playing the moment they get on a court. And I think that that's pretty compelling. I would assume there's some resemblance to the Canadian uh, kettle curling. Curling, right. Yeah. Obviously, that's a little bit more one mile an hour, but the strategy of moving your exactly. item into position. Yeah. Yep, yep. It's a lot of that. And I think we, I, people ask us all the time if we're going to do curling or, you know, or we're, we're shuffleboard purists focusing on shuffleboard. Is there a sign when businessmen get drunk, don't go fuck it. I'm just going to throw it as hard as I can and try to like, because I'm sure, right? People are like, oh man, I'm just going to fucking wing it. Boom. Yeah. That is part of that two minute <laughs> lesson is please do not go back and smack that disc. Nobody likes a biscuit banger. That is not, we, we try to discourage that. I would say that I'm very surprised that there aren't as many lightsaber battles as I thought there would be. I really thought we would see a lot of people with the with their tangs, that's what the sticks are called, doing lightsaber battles. And that happens much less frequently than I was afraid it would. I'm sorry, did you say biscuit banger? <laughs> yeah. Do you just yeah. make that up or is that a real no, term? Biscuits are the the actual, yeah. tics, that's what they're called. And we just have a little, we have a little okay. uh, instruction sheet and on it that says nobody likes a biscuit banger. Okay. Did you make up that term? I mean, I think I made up the sentence at the time. Okay. Yeah. I don't think there were biscuit bangers before, but I don't know. Right. That, you know, I don't know, that, I'm, I don't know if that's going to go down in, in the annals of history as like, oh, nobody likes a biscuit banger. Ashley Albert. It's just such a good, I love words and I love expressions. Every day in life, people throw something out really quickly and I stop them. Did you just make that up? And sometimes they have, sometimes they haven't, but it's just, I love that. Just like you in voiceovers, there's a visceral thing where brrr, it just comes out. So um, I learned the word foment over COVID. I had never heard it before mm -hmm. and now I hear it everywhere. So does that happen to you with the word? Have you ever learned a word and then heard it immediately everywhere, you, everywhere after that? I mean, maybe not to that extent, but similar. I remember I never heard of shits and giggles and someone was like, you have never heard that. And then I started hearing it a lot, but I had never heard of that one. I lived, I, found, I learned the word cul-de-sac and then found out I lived on a cul-de-sac. <laughs> so you hadn't, you didn't, <laughs> that's in Miami? Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Can you spell cul-de-sac? I definitely can spell cul-de-sac. What do you got? What do you got? C-U-L-D-E-S-A-C. That's it. No hyphens in there, right? No hyphen. That's right. No. But so okay. we ran into someone from elementary school once a couple of years ago, and she said, ah, Ashley Albert, you are the smartest girl in school. You could spell spaghetti. And then <laughs> that, was her, that was her mark demarcation line of like, what made me the smartest girl in school was that I could right. spell spaghetti. And then I went to spell spaghetti for her for old time's sake and could not spell spaghetti. I lost my touch. No longer the smartest girl in school. There's an H in there somewhere. It's either before or after the G. Right, but uh, it's, it's what comes after SP. A. A, yeah. I think at the time I was like, E. Oh, spaghetti. Spaghe. And yeah, it's, it's either HG or it. GH. Probably GH. Yeah. GH, okay. That's nice. I was on the spot what? at the time. What makes you so good at shuffleboard? I'm not trying to overdo it, but if you're not, whatever. Not I'm not good at shuffleboard at all. I really am not. The reason I had that, the only reason I'm even ranked, so we go and we play in the world championships every year. Uh, and it's in a different place every year. It actually was canceled last year because of COVID and they just announced that it's going to be canceled this year too. It was going to yeah. be in Australia last year and it was going to be in Texas this year. But we, the year before that, we were in Vienna. And before that, we were in Brazil. Um, wow. And so we get to go play and it's not everybody. There's like a Florida shuffleboard association. That's like the really serious players, but this is more of a 
friendly global shuffleboard community and there's a Norwegian team and a Japanese team and a German team and a Swedish team and an Irish team and an Australian team and we all get together and we play and um, these are all I mean I am the youngest hot chippy for miles like it, it all of these people are in their 70s and 80s and right. they're retired and they play six hours a day and it and they are bloodthirsty oh, yeah and I have a shuffleboard business you know we say that they invite us to the to play like you know, Bill Murray gets invited to play in the Masters, except that Jonathan now is actually a very good player. So he comes legitimately, and then I just tag along for comic relief. And I've always said, you know, I'm happy to come in last. I, you make more friends when you lose. But what I realized is that they're so afraid to lose to me. They have so much more to lose losing to me than I wow. have to gain winning to them that if they make mistakes at all, I just yeah. need I just need to start looking like I'm getting excited, like I might win and reminding them about how exciting it's going to be for me to win since I'm not a very good shuffleboard player. And then they lose them, you know, on their own. I just have wow. to sit back and let it happen. I am seeing a, uh, a series here, a television program. That sounds very interesting. <laughs> yeah, or, Did or you get on movie? Did you get the young girl? I she's so cute. I, it makes my hands shake more, and I can't do it. I don't want to lose to a woman. I don't want to lose to a beautiful woman, but I'd love to take her back to the hotel. <laughs> it's not, so it's not a Jewish. It's no longer a Jewish sport right. in any way. These are not. This is this is a different demographic of shuffleboard yeah. players these days. Yeah. And the royal, obviously. Um, I looked a little online. This is a, it's a huge thing, right? You have yeah. bands and food and bars. And, are there pool tables there too? No, no. So it's all shuffleboard. Right. We have 10 regulation size courts in Brooklyn and we have 10 plus a roof deck with a court on the roof in Chicago. And, uh, our food program is that we drive food trucks directly into the building and we swap them out every week. So it's a different food truck every week. Uh, we used to have bands. We don't have bands anymore, but we always have really incredible DJs and Jonathan DJs too. He's our best DJ. But people come in there like, I'd love for you to play at my wedding. And he's like, I am an exclusive <laughs> Royal Palms DJ. Um, and yeah, and it's a great time. We do a lot of birthday parties and all sorts of, what's cool about it is that it's kind of for all ages. I mean, it's 21 and over, but you can bring your parents when they're from out of town and they aren't gonna feel like you've dragged them to some hip bar. Everybody belongs there. My right. favorite, my favorite um, Yelp review that we ever got was something like, if you think you're not cool enough, you, you're wrong. <laughs> you're definitely cool enough. Everybody's cool enough here or something like that, which I really liked. And our, we have leagues on Mondays yep. and Tuesdays. We have 120 leagues, so about 1,000 people playing between Monday and Tuesday nights in both cities. Mm -hmm. And I think when we start opening again, we're going to start only with leagues um, first, first with our existing leagues, and then maybe we'll open it up to the public so that they can try being in a league too before we just open to the public with open hours. And you told me you're thinking about Philadelphia as a possible third location. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's still sort of a just sort of banding about as a concept. But Jonathan was actually there today, looking mm -hmm. at looking at sites. So we'll see. That could be a good. That could be a good third place for us for sure. It's just right Fish around town, there. Northern Liberties. Where was he Fish looking? Town. Yeah, Fishtown. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you from Philadelphia? Yeah, I grew up in the suburbs. I went to Temple really? University, and then I ended up living in Fishtown from age 25 to 30, and then I came to New York. Wow. So, yeah, yeah. Do you see the was, people there? Uh, in Fishtown or in Philly? In Philly. Yeah. I got still a few friends. I got family in the suburbs. Uh, you know, people tend to scatter. The cool ones go to New York, and the other ones, and I don't know. I was ahead of the curve in Fishtown. It was... Uh, kind of like artists and white trash mixed. And then it was just only a matter of time. And now, brrr, of course, it's become the Bushwick of Philadelphia. Um, yeah. Yeah. I live in a cool. church. Uh, I'm going to. Hmm. Yeah. And my guest last week, if anybody wants to go back, Dominic Episcopo also lives in a church, but his is like two million square feet. It's huge. And it's just him and his wife and his dog and his cat and his kid. And it's amazing. I lived in a smaller one that had two apartments. I had a basement apartment and an upstairs apartment. And I used it to photograph models in and do tap dancing. And uh, my cat and my neighbor's cat would go back and forth. It was, yeah, I loved it, loved it, loved it there. I want to say hi to my uh, Jesus Cardenas Films. Biscuit Banger sounds like a great name, duh, yeah. 
ladies and gentlemen, not, uh, uh, last one on this evening is oh. going to warm welcome to Biscuit Fanger. Oh, I see, there's, I see that there, I didn't know that there was a. Uh, oh, yeah, there's a chat. There's a whole yeah. chat section. Yeah, I was going to have my uh, co host kind of, uh, you oh, know, no. monitor it so she could reply. So, my girl, yeah. Rachel Rosen, who says the cool ones go to New York. Yeah, they don't go to Squirrel Hill, Pittsburgh, right? Well, maybe. Oh, you know, is, that where, is that where Rachel is? Is she in Pittsburgh? I believe so, yes. Yeah, and she even abandoned her Philadelphia sports teams for Pittsburgh. You, you, you just don't do that. Wherever you are, age 9, 10, 11, you're stuck. You think I went to New York, Rangers? No, fuck that. Philly, Flyers. Okay, sorry. Uh, spent, my boy Spencer Tunick, can I play on the sidewalk for COVID, afraid people? Mm. Can I? I don't. Um, I mean, you also, can on sidewalk for sure. Okay, going down to Hollywood, Florida to visit her in a condo playing shuffleboard till sunset. Oh, that's nice. And that's kind of the idea. You know, it's a vintage Florida themed club. So it will remind you very much of visiting your grandmother in Florida for sure. You should come visit us. And there's Floridian drinks, evidently. What is a Floridian drink cocktail? I mean, we have all sorts of drinks. We, may, you know, it's like a, it's a, it's a pretty affordable night out, but we have pretty respectable drinks. We make all of our syrups in house. It's all fresh juices, and it's guava juice and mango juice and pineapple juice, and Ooh. you know, we have a. Our most popular drink is called the Shuffleboard Bob, and it is um, a homemade cucumber syrup with Peychaud's bitters coconut water, lime juice, and Bar Hill gin. And it's delicious. And like fresh and crisp and refreshing. Oh. Yeah, oh, it's the least oh, I can yeah, do. I just, this, <laughs> this, this is what I've been should have doing, should have been doing all along. If I had an assistant and they'd be popping off and showing the visuals. And I apologize because you have so many good, I mean, the, uh, you know, the matzah, I should have been throwing things, but we can make sure with links, this is, AshleyAlbert.com slash Royal Palms. Is that this one? Is there another? Is that the right? It's just, it's just RoyalPalms.com will get you there. Okay. Uh, That's a good yeah, URL. Royal Palms Brooklyn or Royal Palms Shuffle or Royal Palms Chicago. And it's yeah. in Gowanus. It's right and around the corner. It's right where you and Elliot live. Yeah. We're just right here. Who is Elliot? Oh, who who is Elliot? How we gotta we need an entirely second <laughs> web vlog vod vlogcast for Elliot. I, I mean, you got two out of eight sentences: crazy dog lady and helicopter dog mom. So yeah. Well, I think well, I, I, said, sum I think I said crazy dog lady, and then I amended it to helicopter dog mom. I think uh, we could have okay. guessed that I was going to be a crazy dog lady. Elliot is my first pet ever. Yeah. And we are soul bonded. He is my guy. Can I, I want to meet him one day. Dogs and I. Yeah. You're, no, here's, okay. here's the problem. Elliot is like a one, one woman oh. dog. He is, dis, he's upsettingly adorable and disappointingly unaffectionate to all comers. He will ignore you. Unaffected. No, it's impossible. Mm -hmm. Let's do a test. We'll, we'll bet a nickel. Says Everybody says, okay, but me, but, I, but I'm good with dogs, but not Elliot. He's a tough nut to crack. He's an uncomfortable nut. I speak dog. I can. <laughs> and then I talk to them and I say, what are you doing? Come here. Did you get some tuna fish? Do you like birds? And they're like, oh, wait, I know you. You're saying my name. You got it. All right, whatever. Hmm. I mean, well, I, I'd like to see you try, but he might, he might bite you. That's okay. I'm just I saying. I know who's bossed. Tiffany Schley. Is that a friend of yours? Says oh, Elliot yeah. with eight exclamation points. So oh, yeah, Elliot. Mm -hmm. Chris Chirella says rum runner. Oh, I guess that's a drink. And pina colada. Yum. Oh, yeah, we do pina coladas, frozen pina coladas. And I want to say hi to Adam, who I've been bugging forever. Adam, I don't know. I feel like when I hit 30 shows, I got to, it's going to be tough. So this is your chance. Um, let me see. Lauren Forsh. Hi, I hope you're still there. Anche Hubna Feder, the bread of affliction. Oh, yeah. Lots. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Forgot. <laughs> okay. So I've, I've prolonged enough. Now we got to go. This is so exciting because, uh, hold on a second. We can go to the, the video that I made, which is shuffleboard number four. All right. This should be a good one. Let's see. 
Uh -oh. Give us some good sound bites. No, my guess is we know a shuffleboard club. If your friend said, let's go out and play shuffleboard, would you go? I would go. I would have to refresh on the rules, but I, I do love a good shuffleboard at a bar. I think I would be the one to tell my friends to go to the shuffleboard club. But with that being said, yes, I would force all my friends to go. Ooh, maybe if like COVID regulations and if COVID wasn't a thing, then yeah. I think so. Yeah, why not? I would do it at, for like a kitsch value, to, like get, have a martini and get dressed up. Yeah, like, if there was a party, maybe like a shuffleboard party, maybe and get a bunch of people into it that way for sure. If your friend said, I want to go to a shuffleboard club. I'm there, bro. <laughs> why? Like in a heartbeat, dog. <laughs> I'm going to get competitive with it too, bro. Yeah. What is my outfit? Are we black? Are we all black? Are we all white? <laughs> Shuffleboard? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It depends on where it's at. Brooklyn, Gowanus. Yeah, sure. Are we all blue? What's the sock? Orange with a with a gas station logo on the back. That's great. I used to do like ice stuff as a kid, like ice skate and like a little bit of like ice hockey. So uh -huh. Maybe. <laughs> You're good with the gliding arts. Yeah, I try. It took me a couple goes, but yeah, I think I get the feel for it. I wouldn't. Okay. No, no. Unless there's free pizza. There could be. Or free matzo. <laughs> With sriracha. Maybe if they exploded when they hit the things. <laughs> <laughs> Something, something's got to pick up the shuffleboard. If someone said, let's go to a shuffleboard club in okay. Brooklyn, would okay. you go? Absolutely. I've done it before. It's super fun. The one in yeah. Brooklyn? Uh, the one in Gowanus, yes. That's it? Yes, I've been She's to She's the one. owner, there's my best She's the owner, okay, yes, I love that club. Yeah, super fun. Keep yeah. going. I, I wish, it, I, I heard bowling is back open recently, hoping that shuffleboard is coming back as well. Yeah, that's great. Right? Yeah. That's great. We didn't, you didn't get any no's. Oh, you did, the gay guys. The old gay guys. Were, yeah, my keep in mind. Friends. Of each 13 answers, there was probably eight that didn't make the cut. I was like, got to keep these at a minute and a half. That seems to be the length that just, just about right. Otherwise, you start. So I did, yeah. But, but that was great. Everybody was. Everybody said yes. We will have them all. I would love to have them all in. Yeah, and I love the guys like, dude, I'm so into it, bro. What color are we wearing? What oh, I'm getting great. in. I get that guy in a league team. Yeah. Wow. Great. Let's see what we got. Oh, it's just 10.03. I think we only have one. Let me see one. Oh, no. Let's talk about snacks. Well, just okay. to let our people know, it's 10.03. We have two more questions. We'll probably go another 15 minutes or so. I'm sure with Ashley, we could go all night. <laughs> Maybe I should have had her had a drink because then I would love to hear some voices. Well, we didn't even talk about all your, oh, God. And then there's, there's um, I shouldn't say, oh, God, um, um, the Jimmies, which you said was third, or according to an article, was, was your most, the thing you're most proud of? I think that it's the thing that is the most, uh, like, if you want to get to know me as a person, yeah, watching the Jimmies music videos, I think, encapsulates most of what you need to know about me as a person. It's, I Keep feel going. like I think it is a, a very accurate expression, creative expression of who I am. And it still, they, it still makes me laugh. And I feel like that is, that is the mark of success. When I hear the songs, they still make me laugh out loud. But explain to people what oh. it is. Oh, it is a rock band for children. So it's music for kids. Um, it's called the Jimmy's J-I-M-M-I-E-S. We don't really play out anymore. Um, but yeah, we've got music videos. We have a Christmas album that's not very good. The Christmas album's mm, only so-so. It's actually very upsetting because when you look it up on Spotify, I think the Christmas album, which is called Mama Said Nog You Out, is uh, the first thing that comes up. And it's really a marginal, it's a, a marginal piece of work. We had to make it fast. It was like back when Barnes and Noble was important and they asked if I had one and I lied and said that I did. And then I had to quickly make one. So I made it in like two weeks. It's really quality. I mean, if I just saw this, I would think that's what you do for a living. You're making jingles relating to kids songs and, and the production value. If any, somebody yeah. goes on the site and plays some of these videos, it's really high. Yeah. Is this a monetary thing? What? No, I mean, I think it could have been back in the day. It was, it was something that kind of happened by accident. It wasn't something that I did to make money. Um, uh -huh. But I really, oh, and actually that, I think you would enjoy that. That's our behind the scenes um, like featurette. It's really my favorite thing that we made in the Jimmies because it tells you how we made all of the videos. And that's the director, Mike Slavens, who is incredibly talented. I see. I don't think I checked the audio tab because if I played it, we're not going to hear it. But yeah, uh, it's uh, okay. I'm a fan. Yeah. 
Do you hear anything? I didn't probably. Nope. Mm -mm. Okay. All right. Well, it's good. Go to her website because it's it's just beautiful. And I'm jealous and I'm thinking I should do that because uh, there's so many different things. You and I, not to tell my own horn, we have a lot in common. The thing that you have above me is the probably the success side because I've had, I got three published books. I had my own television show. I did stand up and sketch comedy. I was a photojournalist, fashion travel, nightlife, kids photographer. Oh. Um, I'm doing a web show. It's like the thing never stops, right? And it's like create and produce. And that's what probably gets both of us going is to do things and create and people look and they're like, man, you're always doing something. And what? yet nothing has gotten. And I'm reading your bio and other things. It was encouraging because you were like, you got to stick you can't be afraid to fail and you have to stick to it. I mean, it sort of goes without saying, but I mean, I sounds, just... look, it, it do, I don't think it sounds like you're su succeeding because you're just doing the things you want to do and you're having fun doing them. I mean, that as long as you can pay your rent, yeah. you're OK. Barely. What are the books? Tell me what the names of your books are so I can look for them. Oh, I don't think Spencer would like that on national television. Oh, um, but they're. They're called Naked Happy Girls, Bubble Bath Girls, and Naked Coast to Coast. I did oh, a it's a series. <laughs> kind of, yeah. The series and the fact that it involves nudity and naked people. And actually one of the things that I'm right now thinking is I should I you know, the OnlyFans sites or something. I have hundreds upon hundreds of shoots that I've done that are just beautiful and natural and fun. They're sexy, but they're real. And it's like I'm sitting on it and I maybe there's a little bit of guilt that uh, not to make it about me, but, you know, a lot of the people I photographed 20, 25, 15 years ago have gone on to different things. Mm. They probably like I'd rather not if you use this. Yeah. So I'm caught in this ethical, but it's great things and I'm proud of it. So I want to say just you be proud of it and I need to make money. How about if I just offer it to fans that give me seven dollars a month? I, I don't know. But. We'll, we'll have a meeting about it later and we'll get your good idea. About it. Good idea. Yeah. But go to her website because among the Jimmy's, and you look a little like Sarah Silverman in one photograph. Do you ever get that comparison? I do. I, well, I used to. I used to. And how do, how yeah. do you react? Sure. React. Great. You know, I think yeah. they were both like, you know, dark haired Jewish people. She is more of a potty mouth, but I can hang. I could hang if I needed to hang. Okay. Are you, do you drink? This is my one beer, which I always have for the show, my IPA. Oh, mm -hmm. um, no, I'm not a drinker. Not, uh, I just never really acquired a taste for it. It's kind of yucky. And yeah. I now have finally come to accept, uh, I think my liver does not produce the enzyme required to process alcohol. So okay. every, twice a year, I'm like, tonight is the night I am doing it. <laughs> and then I'll try to drink and then I will throw up like 20 times in a row. In fact, I had an argument with Jonathan about this. Let me see if you have an answer to this. He thinks that I could stop throwing up, that it's psychological. And I'm like, that is oh. a an involuntary bodily yeah. response. Do you think that someone who's throwing up 20 times from drinking could stop throwing up if they wanted to? I don't think so. Were you asking no. me or somebody else? I'm asking you. I, I oh, think yeah. it's, it's an involuntary response, right? I mean, you can stop farting and burping. You just can't stop throwing up. Can you stop farting? If you no, need I was kidding. Fart, I was just kidding about it. that. <laughs> you can't stop yeah. a sneeze. Right, right. You could hold it in, but it's bad for you. Yeah, I doubt it. That Now, and you're getting sick. Is this like one drink, two, three, five? I would Does, it doesn't even matter. Yeah, it could be one drink. It could be two drinks. Yeah. Uh, I, so I always say that if everybody felt the way I felt when I drink, nobody would drink. Yeah, it sounds terrible. I mean, I'm a lightweight. I one or two, when I hit two drinks, that's like that's perfect, and that's all I do. But I am anything else? Are you a smoker of things that are? I'm a I'm a I'm a sugar. I love sugar. Snacks. Snacks. That's next on our list. Evidently, the kid on TV thinks she's the queen of snacks and knows more and eats more and has better taste. So we're gonna talk to her in a minute. Tell us about your snacks. Tell me about, tell you about my snacks? Yeah. Oh, you mean just in life about my snacks? No, like, well, sure. You, I think when we were talking, you, I was asking about you and you said, I'm really known for my snacks. Like nobody loves them as much as me or is as much as a yeah. connoisseur. Okay. I think I have a, you know, I have a, a vast collection of snacks at all times. I think mm -hmm. I really, I really covered the gamut of, of snacks. I have a deep 
snack knowledge. Uh-huh. Uh, I've been very, very big into junior mints for all of COVID, even though I Ooh. never was before. Uh, there's these junior mint minis, yes. and they're very hard to find, and I love them. But when I do find them, I only buy one bag because I it, the, the taste <laughs> is part of the is part of the fun. I think if I had too many of them, I wouldn't like them anymore. Sounds like things in movie theaters, uh, the mini mints and stuff like that. Junior mints? Junior it's mints. A, yeah. mm-hmm. It's a Seinfeld episode. Do you remember yeah. that? I think. Yes. Wanted to, okay. In fact, I was talking to a friend of mine who's a prop master about junior mints, and he looked them up and found that there was a junior mint box on eBay signed by <laughs> Jerry Seinfeld. But I don't know if it was the original junior mint box. I think like okay. somebody just had him sign a junior mint box and then tried to sell that on eBay. So right. what was the, what was the asking price? I don't remember, but it was not, it was not an appropriate price. Okay. <laughs> Sounds like your mother. It's not an appropriate, price. not an appropriate price. Where does your, where do your parents live? Are they still in Miami? Are they still around still in Miami? Yeah. My mom lives in coconut Grove. She was a makeup artist for like television and commercials uh, and stuff. And oh, my wow. dad lives in North Miami and he was a, a record producer. Yeah. Wow. So they're they're down there. They're divorced, but they are both living living their lives. In fact, my dad had COVID in December, and I just spoke wow. with him today, and he got checked for um, antibodies. Yeah. It turns out he has – so there's like – in the antibodies, there's something that's like an, an M and a G antibody, and the G is when you're done with COVID, and the M is when you have it. And he has both still, even though it's been almost two months. So, and the doctor said he'd never seen that before. So I don't know what that means, that possibly he still has active COVID in his system. Hard to say. Oh. oh. Yeah. But he's doing good. He's, 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 uh, I think we all got lucky there. So, yeah. Yeah. I won't go into COVID. I'm not a fan. Mm. <laughs> That's nobody else. All right, favorite snack. Let's see what other people had to say. I put on uh, in the chat to ask people because surely, mm. like Rachel Rosen is going to tell us. Uh, Dee Dee Champagne says on the horn with Andrew Einhorn, Cracker Jacks. Cracker Jacks. And Spencer says tap dancing. Thank you very much, Spence. I didn't make it very far. I took like, I think I missed two classes, and then my shuffle ball changes were just out. And it's a shame. As a kid, I grew up watching. You know, I loved Sammy Davis and the. Okay. Uh, all right. Favorite snacks. I like a good snacks. cheese. Snacks. Anything that you love, chocolate, Can you hear sweet, it? salty. Yeah. yeah. So I love Takis, Fuego, uh, the, the hot lime flavor. Uh-huh. Uh huh. I could have as many of those uh, as I possibly could. Honestly, saltines. Um, you know, honestly, could be the snack of the year making a huge comeback. Ritz crackers, uh, goldfish. Okay, everyone's sick, you know, in the past year, hopefully. Yeah. Maybe they're getting better. I'm guessing saltines flew off the shelf. Favorite snacks? Yeah. Those little, like, Ferrer Rocher little chocolate hazelnut balls. Those are balling. Yeah. I'm balling with those balls, bro. <laughs> I'm not as big into candy as I am into chips and chocolate. I love dark chocolate. So when I go to Trader Joe's, it's dark chocolate covered Reese's peanut butter cups. Dark chocolate. <laughs> dark chocolate covered espresso beans and walnuts. Woo! Above all, definitely Rice Krispie Treats and uh, Uh, favorite snacks, anything in terms of sugar, salt, marshmallow that you like? Oreos. (laughs) Chocolate M&M's, the the pretzel. Yo, combo, yo, combos. I like um, Reese's Sticks. Those just busting, oh my God. She makes these chocolate covered pretzels, so it's hitting the chocolatey and savory. I like chocolate covered strawberries. Um, Chocolate fondue. Coffee cakes, rather, is the name for them, yeah. They do, yeah, I, I love cinnamon. Sugar and cinnamon. I can put cinnamon on anything. Anything chocolate, chocolate. and yeah, nice. salty, and maybe preferably salty chocolate. Uh huh. I like white chocolate, but. That's for psychotic people. <laughs> I will tell you, as just proof of my snack prowess, that I have yeah. in my house. Almost every snack that was named <laughs> in your video. I got a whole wow. Ferrero Rocher's. I got combos. I got all kinds of stuff in here. I'm not a dark chocolate person, though. I like the cheap milk chocolate. Oh. Here. I'm not a fan. But okay. I do have, I probably have dark chocolate in here, too. I have everything that was listed 
You got it. It's so. good to have dark chocolate. You put it in your refrigerator or freezer. That's where I keep it, especially those mm -hmm. dark chocolate e covered M&Ms. And they just, you can suck on it for a minute and then it starts to melt and you bite it. Oh, I love cold chocolate. Actually, my demise during COVID has been ice cream because I'm a, a, every night. I went and I got weighed today. I went to a new doctor. I was five pounds like heavier than I've ever been. Mm -hmm. I, 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 as soon as I get the shots, ice cream diet. I'm just saying, I'm still playing hockey. I'm still eating healthy food, but ice cream. Do you like ice cream? I am I think of ice cream as one step above a, a whipped cream. To me, it is the thing that goes on the dessert. It is not the dessert itself. Oh, wow. Oh. Oh, I don't think it's going to work between you and I. That's such a, <laughs> no, it's fine. Okay. <laughs> well, you know what? I got me a lot of the pretzel -y things. There was like three or four people. I tried to put them together in a row, like a pretzel stick with chocolate, a pretzel, a pretzel. The oh, also, the guy talked about saltines, which matzah were taking on the saltine for sure. And I have an idea for pretzel matzah so we could combine the whole thing, make everybody happy. Wow, that's great. The Jimmy's, the, 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 wow, we're down to the uh, Valentine's thing, which is my last one. Let me see if there's anything else on, on all of our notes that I didn't talk about. Your really dog, I, into this. I, feel, I feel like we neglected your pooch just a little bit. What oh, it is, oh, what? Yeah. No, but what is it about dogs? Yeah, I really have a lot of respect for dog people because I, I love to, if, when I would ask somebody if they had a dog and I wanted to photograph them, if they did, it was automatically great because it has this soft side, an emotional connection. What is it about dogs? Are you an animal lover? Is it just dogs? I never was. I was always terrified of animals. And I, it, so we could not have guessed that I was going to be this crazy dog person, but I am mm -hmm. just, I mean, it, it, I'm an only child and I'm an only grandchild. And I feel like having Elliot makes me feel no longer alone in the world. And that's pretty, pretty special. Now, have you, has your attitude changed? You see other dogs in the street. You're like, oh, what yeah. kind is that? Is that a Sharpei Shih Tzu mix? Is that a... I don't do that, but I feel like I pass by dogs and I'm like, hi, friend. Like, I feel like, oh, I know Elliot. You know Elliot. We hang out, mm -hmm. and, you know, but yeah. actually, yeah. So it's, uh, I'm much... I'm a dog sympathizer now in a different way than I was before. Yeah. Right. Well said, dog sympathizer. Ashley, what have you learned about yourself from having this dog? What have you learned about yourself? I learned, I mean, I learned how to love unconditionally. I learned how to love truly the, the joy and pleasure of um, taking care of something else other than yourself. If and when you're looking for another human, a man, a woman, a thing, is it important? Do you like say, do you like dogs? Is it like, do you want to make sure? I think, yeah, now especially, it, we are a package deal. Yeah, there is no, okay. and really, I mean, he kind of rules the roost, although he's right. not going to be nice to anybody. He's not going to be mean. He's just going to ignore you. Sure. I saw it. I was, uh, okay, well, let's, we'll wait and see. <laughs> Footage to follow, fans. <laughs> Have I, let's give shout out we, uh, to your website and your thing. I want people to, well, we've talked about the Royal Shuffle. Well, yeah, Royal we should, I would love for people to go check out Shuffle Insanity, which is on our YouTube channel. Cause I think that's just, it's cool. And I think it really, if you watch it, you'll understand how, like how to be a really good shuffleboard player without ever playing. It's, it's really, I'm excited about it. And some of our league members made it and it's surprisingly high quality and, I think it's good. So yes, Royal Palms Shuffleboard YouTube. Every Monday night we put out a new match. There's a lot of sports that I play and there is tennis, top spins, side spins, hockey. There's a lot of things you can do. I can't imagine. I know you're getting in there and you're trying to knock other people off and get in, but can you spin? Can you put a rotation on these said discs? Not, not I mean, yes, there's drift on, on our courts, but if you go down to Florida, they put silicone covered glass beads on the court and they shake them on the court and then they wipe them up and take them down every time they put it down for a new game. And so, yeah, you completely can spin around and you can get some turn on it. So wow. kind of, they say that the person who figures out the drift will win because if you figure out a right. trick, Hey, if I hit it just there, it'll quickly turn and go that way. And once you figure out how to do that, you can kind of set yourself up to be able to take advantage of that. So yeah, there's definitely wow. Speaking of drift, 10 o'clock, Chicago rooftop, wind coming in off Lake something or other. There's a little yeah. wind drift. 
It's yes, wind drift. <laughs> uh, what else? Let's see. So we mentioned that the matza. I mean, yeah, this is project. It's going to be on JetBlue starting March fifteenth. Wow, that's big. Yeah. Yeah, that's wonderful. When you take a plane, you're on your way to Chicago. The person next to you, hey, you see these matzo chips? This is the lemon dill. Who? Well, Andrew's friend came up with the horseradish oh, one. I like lemon dill. That's a good one. Lemon dill. Hmm. I'm gonna put okay. that on the list. I want 0.5%. <laughs> I think we're done. Valentine's before I cut. Well, I'll go to Val any tell us something about Valentine's. I'll go to the video and then I'll come back. I mean, for me, the big holiday is 85% off Valentine's Day candy day, which is the next day. That's the day that I really do my celebrating. Uh, okay. Russell Stover chocolate covered marshmallow hearts. Hmm. Reese's seasonal Reese's the best Reese's. Valentine's Day shout outs. Let's see. When we come back, we have to find out what the future holds for you because there's just so wow. full of ideas. Any Valentine's Day shout out? Uh, to my foster dog, Violet, who I love ha. very much. Uh, she's my Valentine this year. Tanisha and Darren, I live with you. My boys in Seattle. Happy Valentine's Day to the homies. <laughs> They're the ones most supportive people in my life. <laughs> Shout out shout to this out love. To <laughs> shout out to my love right here. Shout out to my Vita, my love. Aww. We love each shout other. Shout out to you, to everybody also, here. Shout out to our friend who passed away. Yeah. Oh. Powell. Ricky Powell. Oh. Ricky Powell. <sighs> this is, you know, crutches are crutches are crutches. Yeah. Happy Valentine's no, Day. No, none. Okay. What about me? What about my needs? What am I, chopped liver? Happy Valentine's Day, love, shout out. You want to give this onesie right here? <laughs> Only this onesie. Yeah, I just <laughs> gave my girlfriend like a bunch of gifts at her job. Uh, her name's Noe. She's really cool. I got her this monkey. Yeah. And it says bananas for you on the. She's like holding a little heart. It's really cool. <laughs> no, I am alone in life, and I suspect it will always be like that. Um, to myself. Hi. What's up? <laughs> but uh, shout out to Bob Dylan and okay. Taylor Swift. I love Taylor Swift. Uh huh. I'll give a shout out to my parents for Valentine's Day as well as my girlfriend Issa. Uh, Wait, so you do have a girlfriend? <laughs> shout out my mom. You know, I love my mom. My mom and my boyfriend Josh. We're not dating. Sophia. Sophia. We want to. Oh, thank you. Thank you guys. <laughs> All right. Shout out to Sarah Messenger and Polly B. Sarah, Polly B. And Jack. And Jack. I want to give a Valentine's Day shout out to everyone that gave me an answer today because this crowd was amazing. New Yorkers, you're so strong. Mucho fuerte. You know, you're eating outside in 10 degree weather with your jackets, good on you. So happy Valentine's Day to you, to me, and everyone. Yeah! <laughs> Will it call me a swinger and I guess I am? You're the ox! <laughs> Did you have somebody else hold the camera? Like hold the camera while I go zoom away? Of or did course you I did. It's you one did of the every... Every week when I do interviews, I find that special person. Like, you are gonna hold it. Here's what we're gonna do. You, I'm gonna interview you. You're gonna give me good answers, and then I'm gonna give you the camera. And you're gonna film me. They don't even have a choice, and they're uh usually like, okay, and it's fun. And then sometimes I do that after a good answer. I take off, and I can hear them laughing, like, ha, ha. and then their friends like, that guy's so weird. And uh, I'm like, <laughs> okay, fuck it. So what does the future hold for you? There's, you're so diverse. What projects, what things, novels, biographies? Yes, uh, I, well, I, um, I have a couple of ideas, but I don't have anything on the books yet. I think I wanna write the Weird Al musical, Weird Albuquerque, mm. so that's on the agenda. And that's all I have so far. Who knows what's, who knows what's next? I don't have a plan. Are you a fan of Elon Musk? I mean, no more or less than anybody else. I guess I don't really, I don't really follow him around. Although someone told me today that the Signal app that we should get it because if he can talk, that we might be able to talk to aliens when Elon Musk oh, goes nice. to space or something. Oh, I like that. Okay, oh, that's something. I like him. He's just he's he's innovative, and he's you know he wants to put a giant uh, electrical panel in all our houses so that we can get our own power, and you know the Tesla and. Yeah. He smoke, smokes pot. I don't know, it seems a little quirky, and I know he's like a billionaire, but uh, I think he's he's advancing our society, so. Yeah, so maybe I'll put that on my, that's, that's what's next for me. I'm planning on advancing society. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Okay, well, th 
Thanks so much for a fun 86 minutes. Thank you so much. This was great. I really appreciate all the hard work you put into it. Thanks. It was cool. Yeah. Uh, all right. I'll see you. I'll see you in the park. I'll see you on the blades. Yeah. No, I want to meet your dog in person at some point. Yeah, we'll see. We'll just see how it all goes down. Oh, I don't see bumper closer. Why aren't you there? Oh, oh that was so perfect. It just like goes bing, bada, bing, bada. I think I might have. Well, I'll go back to the opener. It's almost the same. All right. Bye, everybody. I'll probably see you next week. And it would be show 30 after that. I don't know. These might be collector's item wow. items. Yeah, it's a lot of work. So, you know, we need to work. Oh, I'm glad money. I made it under the wire. Yeah, you did. Okay, bye. Later, bye. Lots of matzah. Hey, I think I'll just let it roll. That was really fun. Thanks for everybody for being on. Yeah, I went an hour and a half, but uh, you know, I had to get in all the stuff. I was actually had a an assistant, a co-host. Sheesh, how would that have worked out? My God. Um, I have a feeling she'll just disappear. People are very flaky. They come and they go. They feign enthusiasm and then phew, drift away. I've got two or three others that I'd like to bring in uh, as an experiment, but. Again, I'm not really quite sure what's going to happen. A couple of people I'd like on next week. And after that, I just don't know. We'll have to have a, a chat about it, you and me. Maybe Ashley. Bye-bye. Uh. End. <laughs>